Get all of your It figures at Big Bad Toy Store at the link in the description down below. Dragon Ball, Pokemon, Kaiju, and more. It's Steven's Toy Reviews. Hello there, collectors. Steven here, and I'm bringing you yet another It review from the 2017 movie. That's right, we're right here on the eve of the release of It Chapter 2, and what better figure to review than the It Pennywise the Dancing Clown release from NECA. This should, should round off the releases from the 2017 movie for Pennywise and roll right into Chapter 2 if they decide that they're going to be doing it. Now with this release, we do get basically the rest of the essentials for Pennywise here, including those spider or bug arms, whatever you prefer to call them. But with this being the fourth chronological release of the Ultimate 2017 body, are you exhausted yet? Well, let's take a look to see whether or not it's worth adding into your collection. Even if you don't own any of the other four 2017 Pennywise Ultimate body releases yet, you should at least be familiar with how the figure looks sculpt-wise. It's pretty impressive. They have a lot of fantastic details. It actually looks like that they can get away with some realistic-looking fabric, even though it is made of plastic, depending on the paint scheme. And that is where this figure is really going to shine compared to some of the previous releases. The original Pennywise release... It looked okay. There were a couple of issues here and there with the paint. The Wellhouse Pennywise looked a little shiny, not too, too gritty or realistic looking, whereas here it is fantastic. There is a nice black wash that is used here to really bring out some of the finer details of Pennywise, and they also used a darker reddish orange coloration for all of the accents on Pennywise. So those little fluff balls that he's going to have on his chest, yep, those are going to be a significantly darker shade of red than previous Ultimate 2017 Pennywise releases. So, this one will stand out on your shelf by being um, a little darker. Not to mention he's going to have different head sculpts, which this one, the default out of the box, is a very, very angry Pennywise showing some teeth. Not to mention default out of the box, we do get the, I'm just going to go ahead and call him Spider, we get the Spider Arms, which are amazing looking with some fantastic detailing and a lot of spikes. If you're interested in a Pennywise that uh, isn't quite like the others, well then congrats. So far for looks, this is going to be one for you. This will be <laughs> the fifth or so time I go over the 2017 body design for Pennywise's articulation. So I'm just going to go through it rather quick and talk about the new stuff in depth. So head plugs in on a peg, that plugs in on a ball joint, and then the neck plugs into the body on a ball joint so we get some decent movement, except for on this one, it likes to pop out a little bit. Uh, not a huge issue since it will just pop back on, but yeah, we do get some nice movement there. Pennywise can look around a whole bunch. Shoulders plug into the body on a swivel, which moves around like so, and then there is a hinge to move the arms in and out, up and down, so on and so forth. We do have a bicep swivel where the arms plug into the shoulder sculpt here, which is good. And then we do have a double elbow hinge where it plugs into the bicep portion, and then the forearm, which on both parts as well, there is a swivel because they are pegs. So not only do we get double hinge action, we also get swivel movement at this point and at this point and then at the forearms as well. We'll talk about the bug arms in a minute. For the ab crunch, we do actually get two ball joints. One is seated in the chest and one is seated in the waist. This allows Pennywise to twist and turn from side to side and rock around. Do be careful. Even though this is the, uh, well, technically chronologically, this is the fourth release. Uh, there are five Pennywise figures using the 2017 Ultimate Body. Uh, they still have not fixed the problem with it getting stuck and broken. Now for the hips, we do have swivels moving forward and back because of the uh, pantaloons, as I have been 
oh so corrected. Uh, that is about as far forward and back as we're going to get. And since there is a hinge there that allows a side to side movement, that is about as far to the side. Do take note though, on one of them, I believe it was this leg, uh, it was frozen with the paint or the finisher, whatever they use to uh, really get the paint to look lively, whatever it may be. Um, there was a loud crack and then the leg started to move. So do be careful there. Now for the legs where the thighs plug into those hip joints, there is a thigh swivel. So that's good. We do get double hinge knees, which is great. Do we get a swivel where they plug in as well? Just like the elbows? You betcha. For the ankles, we do have a hinge allows us to move the feet forward and back. And then just like on our import figures, we are going to have ankle rocker movement, which is very, very cool. Now for the forearms, what do we have? Well, like I mentioned, they do plug in on a peg allowing for swivel movement, which is great. That's fantastic. Then there is a hinge here where the uh, pincers come to a, a, a bend and you can move them out like so. Now there is also a swivel there, much like almost all of NECA's hinges. They plug in on a peg and then there's a hinge, yeah. So we do get a little bit of swivel movement. Now here's the problem. I've had this figure open out of box for a little while now, not too, too long, and the joints are already starting to weaken up, as you can see here. These arms are very heavy, comparatively speaking, for the joints. So if you're going to have this figure on display, it may not be a bad idea to maybe get a support stand for the arms in specific or to support Pennywise if you're going to use a support stand uh, at the arms. So this way there is not a whole lot of weight placed on those elbow or the uh, forearm joints where they would be spinning around or even the bicep swivels. Okay. So do keep that in mind. That is also how you swap out for the additional forearm accessory. So overall Pennywise's articulation, it is very good. And uh, yeah, I didn't really need to heat this up at all except for that one joint pretty good except oh that's getting loose yeah now it's time to talk about accessories and by the numbers huh we actually don't get a whole lot but it's weird because we do but we kind of don't yeah so we do get the alternate forearm pieces, which are going to include fists and splayed hands, and we get three other head sculpts. Yeah, numbers wise, that's not a lot, but let's take a closer look. For the alternate head parts, we are going to get the Judith painting alternate head, which this one, you think that Pennywise didn't have this head at all at any point in the movie, aside from uh, when he popped out of the... Uh, popped out of the painting but actually at the end of the movie when he's fighting the losers club he does use this head to scare them so if you want that like less than five seconds of screen time be to be recreated on your shelf then uh yep you have that option Another head sculpt that Pennywise comes with is one where his eyes are rolled in the back of his head and burning hands are coming out of his mouth. Not only does this head sculpt look weird, because uh, first and foremost, we don't want to see burning hands coming out of anyone's mouth, and uh, the rolled back eyes are pretty cool, but those arms and those hands actually have points of articulation. Where they plug into the mouth, they are on swivels, so this way you can spin them, and then they're on hinges, so this way you can move them around even more, so you can pose these hands and these arms to your heart's content. For the last head sculpt that Pennywise is going to come with, it is going to be the infamous Deadlights head sculpt. And uh, the top of the head, where the, uh, the, the mouth is, he kind of looks like a little bit of a goose. Yeah. Necker really didn't do all that great of a job painting the teeth and the inside of the mouth, but uh, if you felt like touching that up yourself, you can definitely do that. Now, what is really cool about this is that the head sculpt actually lights up, and this has been a little bit of an issue for some folks who have picked up this figure, because apparently they never owned a Tamadachi growing up, because what you basically have to do is remove the hair that's on the back of the head that is clearly removable. You have to pull out a little tab, which I already pulled out because it's kind of simple that, you know, there's a battery, they can't have it connected together. Yeah, you remove that tab that allows the batteries to be connected together. And then you just press a button on and off to turn the light on and off. Yeah, I mean, I'm talking about folks from my own generation, not knowing how to operate battery powered stuff. But anyway, the light up effect for the deadlights head sculpt is pretty sweet. 
in concept. In actual execution, it turns out that the plastic is actually thin enough that there will be some light bleeding through the cheeks, through the hair, and even through the hole where it plugs into the neck. So you will have light bleed down onto Pennywise's collar. So NECA really didn't do a good job blocking off the light. So hopefully you're going to be okay with that. Like I mentioned before, Pennywise does come with alternate forearm parts, so this way he can use actual hands, where he's going to come with fists to recreate the dancing scenes in the movie, and he's also going to come with some splayed hands. So if you have an interest in those, congratulations, they included the ones with the Wellhouse version of Pennywise as well. Since this one is reusing parts from the Ultimate 2017 body, as to be expected, you can part swap with pretty much every other figure that uses the Ultimate 2017 Pennywise body to your heart's content. So yeah, it's a glorified DLC set. So all in all, like I said before, Pennywise by the numbers doesn't come with a whole lot, but everything that he comes with, it is in fact pretty cool including parts from Wellhouse and the original release of the Ultimate Pennywise, yeah, you can make some pretty neat displays. But of course, there are other effect parts and some uh, support stands on the market, and you know I have videos to help you out there. Now we're going to go ahead and move on over to a size comparison with this Pennywise figure and the 1990 V2 Pennywise, because... uh. I'm not going to go ahead and reuse those pictures. No, I wouldn't do something like that. As you can see, Pennywise here will fit in nicely with your already established or newly budding horror collection. Now to round out the review, here is a side-by-side -side comparison with a reissue of the original release Ultimate Pennywise. Yep. Reissue. Definitely the same figure from my original review. Anyway... Here you can see that the Dancing Clown version of Pennywise has a much darker color scheme compared to the original Ultimate Pennywise body, mostly to replicate the fact that uh, he's been fighting the losers down in the sewers. So buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. At about 30 bucks, some folks may find this to be a difficult sell, but to be perfectly honest with you, it is one to add on the shelf. It is a jam-packed release, and uh, everything that we get is pretty cool. Yeah, it's not going to come with every single bell and whistle ever invented for Pennywise, but what we do get is pretty awesome. Just wish that they touched up the deadlights head a little bit better to prevent the light bleed, and they tightened up the joints so this way they could actually support the spider arms. But, all in all, I really do like the figure. Well, collectors, that brings us to the end of the video today, and I just wanted to take a second to thank you so much for watching. Now, you've heard a lot from me, I'd like to hear a little bit from you. Drop in the comments down below whether or not you liked it, you hated it, or maybe you were somewhere in between. I also want to take an extra second here for a nice, humongous thank you to all the patrons for SDR over the last month who have really helped the channel grow into what it can be today. So to all of you, two big thumbs up. Thank you very much. And now the end card should be popping up, which will give you a few clickable links, like maybe to subscribe or head on over to my Patreon, or some short URLs, like to my social media or to my Teespring store. There's also a video I hand-selected for you, so if you want to watch another STR video, I hand-selected some good content for you to watch, so definitely check out that video. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.